what is a mercenary? A person essentially who fights for private gain. The use of mercenaries is prohibited and everyone recognizes that, that you can't raise uh, a private army, uh, so to speak. But international humanitarian law uh, does not prohibit mercenaries or acts of mercenaries because historically the states found mercenaries quite useful uh, in times of trouble. My name is Chaloka Bayani. I teach international law and human rights at the London School of Economics in the Law Department. This market actually blossomed in the 1990s after what was known and still is known as security sector reform, whereby a number of countries began to downsize their military forces and therefore you know, laid out uh, people who were soldiers or generals and whatever the case may be in order to streamline their fighting force, have more efficient smaller forces. And these people naturally uh, had to find uh, a market for themselves uh, and they came up with uh, private military companies where you know they had complete command structures, um, they recruited uh, mostly persons who had been soldiers and who had been demobilized Private security companies and military companies uh, emerged in the early 1990s, spearheaded more by South Africa's uh, Foreign Military Assistance Act, uh, under which uh, private military companies could register in South Africa and offer their military expertise uh, outside of South Africa in places like uh, Sierra Leone, Angola, and elsewhere. In the case of South Africa, there was actually even a unique role where soldiers who were serving in the military uh, either resigned or deserted to join private military companies that were fighting in Iraq uh, because what they paid them on a daily basis was much more than what armed forces officially paid them. So it was worth uh, the risk of them uh, doing this. Although they may recruit mercenaries from the point of view of the ordinary meaning of the word mercenary, once you have them constituted around a private military company then officially they cease to be mercenaries. So the line is a very thin one. This is what interested me, because provided you registered a company lawfully, which had certain military objectives, um, that company could actually use mercenaries, or indeed employ individuals, uh, for the purpose of either providing um, training, intelligence, and in some cases combat activities. Uh, and I got involved in this because at the time um, the UK was considering an ethical foreign policy which would involve human rights. Um, and with the interventionism of the Blair government, uh, there was a sense in which thought was given to the use of private military companies uh, to do some of the interventions abroad. But the major issue was how do these companies get involved without actually um, involving the legal responsibilities of the United Kingdom? Uh, and at that point in time, International Alert was commissioned to look into this aspect. And I was contacted by International Alert um, you know, to prepare a sort of background paper uh, on the subject. Once you set them up, you have to have fairly strong regulatory mechanisms. In the context of Sierra Leone, when the deposed government of Ahmed Kaba uh, contracted executive outcomes um, you know, to fight on behalf of a deposed government, whatever the legitimacy of that was. Um, but subsequently, because that government had no money to pay, uh, they asked them you know, to help themselves the natural resources of the country. Now, that enters a slightly different area where you know, the offense of uh, looting natural resources in warfare uh, becomes problematic. Apart from international humanitarian law, I think you have seen um, other instruments that now seek to prohibit mercenarism. Um, you know, there's the International Convention against the Recruitment and Financing and Use of Mercenaries. There's also the African Union Convention uh, against mercenaries, uh, which prohibit uh, both the recruitment, financing, and training, and use of mercenaries um, in warfare. So I think the rule has emerged outside of international humanitarian law.